You know, today we prepare for everything in the world, everything you can think of. I'm sure we've all got insurance on our homes in case of fire, if it were to burn. We've got insurance on our vehicles in case, you know, there's a wreck. We need them prepared. We've got insurance on about anything you can think of. We've got life insurance, you know, uh, young families especially, and got mortgages, and got insurance. If something happened, maybe their home would be paid off. Uh, we prepare for everything. You know, we got up this morning. We prepared some way to come to church, spruced ourselves up a little bit. I was thinking last Sunday, you know, preparation, all of the news media said it's going to snow. Everybody and their brother run to the grocery store. You know, we got to get milk and bread and food. We might be locked up in our house for a month. We got to prepare for this. I thought, too, of uh, the churches. You saw on TV and radio, many, many churches closed their doors last Sunday. It's going to snow, it's going to be slick. But. You know, UK had a basketball game last Saturday night. Fifty plus thousand people showed up for the basketball game. They wasn't going to stop them from getting out. They had to walk a mile to the game, four wheel drive, whatever. They were going to be prepared and go to that ball game. You know, it'd be interesting if we had the same desire and goal to prepare to come to church as all of those fans did to that ball game. It'd be an amazing uh, day in church as the fuse would be full. We prepare for everything. But hopefully, you know, most of all, we hope to prepare for eternity. Just as we read here uh, in this particular section in Revelation, uh, John writes of the judgment. All of the New Testament and Old Testament to the prophets foretold of the Messiah, the New Testament. Jesus spent this short life on earth giving instructions and training his disciples to prepare for a time when he was gone, to prepare for eternity. So we, we see... All through the New Testament, we're given words of encouragement and words of command that we are to do. So John wrote that he saw this great judgment, the judgment throne. And uh, he, he says there in verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great. It doesn't matter where you come from, what nationality, what color you are. All are going to face the judgment seat of Christ and appear before Christ to be judged by the deeds we've done. He wrote, We were standing before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The judge and, and the dead were judged according to their works. So we're going to be judged by our preparation here on earth. This short life on earth, we're going to be judged by how well we've prepared for judgment and eternity. So uh, we see so many references all throughout the New Testament of this preparation. John told... Uh, the Corinthians and 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And, and he told the Romans pretty much the very same things in, in Romans 14 and 10. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So we know of certainty of two things. There, there's many things we're uncertain of this year, this uh, life on earth, uncertain of what's fact and what's fiction, but we're certain 
There's no doubt at all that we're all going to die and we're all going to face judgment. No two ways about it. It's appointed to man wants to die and then the judgment. So our responsibility while here, our short lives, whether we live to be 10 or 100, you know, compared to eternity, that's a very short span of life. Eternity is tried to be described as the sands on the beach, the sands on the sea, each grain a year. And that would just be the beginning. Can you try to imagine that in, in our minds without time, without aging? It's, it's impossible for us to completely comprehend. But we're to prepare for this uh, judgment. And uh, e even though we prepare for almost everything on uh, we can think of, uh, the most important preparation we can make is preparation for judgment and to hear you know, those most welcome words, enter into the joys of the blessed by a good and faithful servant. Hopefully that's why we're all here this morning. We're commanded to assemble on the first day of the week to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And, and hopefully that's why we're here. It's part of our worship and part of our endeavor to obey Christ's will and be prepared for our, our eternal life. So uh, we, we can look to the Scripture, especially all the New Testament references pertaining to preparation and being ready to face Christ in judgment. Christ said in Matthew 16, 26, What is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, if our work, if our desire is for the earth, for the material things of this earth, you know, when Christ comes again, that's not going to avail us nothing. It's not going to be worth anything. You know, all things are going to be uh, burned. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. All of the material goods of this earth are not going to amount to anything. When we're changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, being spiritual and, and we face the Lord in judgment. We would give everything we had and more if we had it. If we could be prepared and ready for eternity as a Christian and as a child of God being able to inherit that eternal life. So we know that we have to prepare because we've all sinned. Paul told the Romans in Romans 6 and 23, you know, uh, he says, we've all sinned, or in Romans 3, 23, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So uh, from the Garden of Eden all down through time, man has been cursed with this guilt of sin. Sin has entered into the world. And, and we have to prepare ourselves to overcome this lost condition. You know, on this uh, short life on earth, we uh, can lose a lot of, of different things. We can uh, go into a business. We may start a business. We may continue to have a lot more expenses and we're taking in, eventually go bankrupt. We could lose a business and that, that would be bad. We uh, 
might lose some prized possession. Uh, you may lose your billfold somewhere or fall out and never be found. Somebody find it, your money. Uh, there's, there's lots of things we could lose. You know, physically, uh, many people are, are uh, lost their sight for one reason or another. Uh, become blind, and that that uh, you know strikes me as as a terrible thing to happen. You think that you'll use your sight and be in in darkness the rest of your life, and and that would be uh, be terrible uh, to me. But you know, even the blind have led fruitful lives. They uh, led around. They they can. Uh, have help and, and lead a, a good life. But, uh, you know, there, there's hope of uh, going on, recovering if we've lost that. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen many people sick. We've seen people uh, suffer perhaps injury, a vehicle accident, or uh, catch some terrible disease. And uh, be on their deathbed. But, you know, God's given doctors a lot of uh, power and knowledge of how to help and how to cure. And, uh, you know, many may think their lives may have been lost, but with uh, care and, and doctors' prescriptions, they've recovered. And some miraculously that had done given up, you know, for dead. But, but the greatest thing we can lose is our soul. If we approach judgment and are not prepared, if we hear those words, go away, depart from me, I never knew you. Oh, what devastating news that would be to know we've got no hope of recovery, no hope of turning around, no hope of the opportunity to make a decision for the Lord because time has stopped. That'd be the greatest loss anyone could ever experience, losing their own soul and facing an eternal damnation in, in the torment of hell. That Satan wants us to put out of our mind. We don't want to think about that. We don't want to consider that. We want to think about today. We've got plenty of time to make that decision. That's the greatest strategy that's in Satan's plan. You've got plenty of time. Enjoy the joys of the day. You can prepare for eternity later. And we see many, many that fall into that trap and their lives are taken before they get a chance to make that decision. So, you know, the, the good news is that even though we all have sinned, we're under the guilt of sin, we don't have to stay into that curse Christ provide, provides for us the way to overcome that lost condition, to prepare for eternity and live as a Christian and be ready for eternity. We, we know of God's love for us from John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. You believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, that where I am there you may be also. God loves us. He don't want to send us to uh, uh, eternity of torment. He said, for I sent not my Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. 
He sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary, that horrible, ex excruciating death for you and for me, that we may have the gift of eternal life within our grasp. This gift is offered freely. The wages of sin is death. That's what we earn under the curse of sin, but the gift of God is free. The gift of God is eternal life. And he offers us the instructions on how to do it. You know, he's the great physician. If we go to the doctor and, and are deathly ill, we, we can't breathe, we're hurting, the doctor may determine what's, what's wrong with us, diagnose the problem, and, and we've got a medicine for that. You don't have to suffer. Take this medicine. That's, that's the prescription. If you take that prescription and go and throw it in the trash and say, well, maybe I'll get well, maybe I won't, you may not ever get well. You may die. But if you take that prescription and take the medicine, do what the doctor said, you know, there's a very good chance you're going to going to overcome. You won't have to succumb to that disease. Well, Christ is the great physician. He gives us the prescription. He gives us the prescription. We can follow his instructions exactly. We can prepare. We can be ready for judgment. And we know if we have prepared and obey those uh, commands, the plan of salvation, that we too as a child of God may inherit eternal life. But we have to obey. We're going to be judged just by our reading here today. We're going to be judged by our deeds, how well we have prepared. So God commands us to be prepared or we're going to be lost. The choice is ours. Back in Revelation again in, in uh, chapter 22. On over in 22 and uh, then in verse uh, 12 he says Be and behold I am coming quickly my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are those who do his commands that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates to that city. So he said, blessed are those that do. We know the word of the Lord if we don't take his prescription that the great physician gives us, if we throw it away and turn our backs on him, then we should fear God. We should keep his commandments. We know we're going to be turned away from the joys of heaven if we don't do his commands, if we don't prepare for judgment and eternity. So we, we all know of His commands to us. As, as Christ said in, in Luke 13 and 3, He says, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You know, the first thing, the very first step we have to to take is, is hearing the word, the truth. We have to hear the word and, and know what we are to do. And, and we have to believe that 
Christ's word is the authority. But the first step we have to do to act is to repent. As Christ said, except ye repent, you will likewise perish. We repent by changing. We have to change, get out from under this curse of sin. We've got to decide what we're going to do to make a difference and live a life differently than we've lived in the past by accepting his word and doing what he's commanded us to do. By confessing, yes, we believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And as Peter said in Acts 2 and 38 on that day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. We've all seen all of these steps, just about every lesson we've ever heard. Here, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. Several people outside of the Church of Christ, I've heard it said before, said, you know, you Church of Christ preachers, every sermon you get, take us to the water. Tell us how to be baptized. And, and there's a lot of truth in that. But it's, it's imperative that everyone understand how we prepare to meet the Lord in judgment. And, and that's the important step We've mentioned time and time before the lesson of the prodigal son. And, and that's a whole sermon, but we've all heard it. We know the prodigal son who demanded his inheritance and he lived, parted, spent all of his money. His friends left him and starving to death, eating the pig's food as he was feeding the pigs. But the most important lesson we can learn from that parable, he came to himself. He realized what was wrong. He realized he was lost. And, and that's the step that so many people disregard today. They're more interested in the lust of the world, the pleasures of life, the material things to enjoy than living a Christian life. They never come to themselves and realize they've got to do something. They never realize they're lost. And that's what the prodigal son came to himself. He realized he was lost. Then he decided what he had to do. I've got to go to my father and beg forgiveness. And that's the step of salvation. We come back to Christ. We confess we do believe in Him and we know we've done wrong and we want that gift of eternal life. So many never have that desire. Today is more important. Fun is more important. Feel good is more important. We're already told the results when Christ comes back. Many are going to be, he says, many are going to be on that broad road to destruction whose end leads in death and eternity of hell fire. Few are going to be on that straight and narrow path that leads to life everlasting. Christ gave his life on the cross of Calvary to set the new covenant in order. To set the new law whereby we will be judged. But we have to reach out. We've got to accept that gift that he's offered to us.
let's uh, look back just a minute in uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We find there 1 Corinthians 6. I lost my place here. 6 and uh, verse 9. He says, writing to the church at Corinth, Paul says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. And, and he lists all of these that are more interested in pleasures or more interested in uh, the lust of today, the joy. He said, don't be deceived thinking you're going to get by. He says, neither fornicators, idolaters, or adulterers, nor homosexuals, or sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. He, he was accusing some of the church there in Corinth of taking part in some of these activities. And, and many today who claim to be religio religious are doing the same thing. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So, Paul is telling the church there at Corinth and us today, once you've accepted Christ and gone back into the world of sin, you too have no hope. You've got to come back, confess those faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. That's the only way to fully prepare and get ready for judgment. So we have to leave our sin. We have to strive to live our Christian life for the Lord. James says in James 4 and 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We know from the word of the Lord, from our studies, from many lessons we've heard what we need to do, how we need to live, how we are to control our tongue who we are to associate with, how we are to leave an example for others. We know right from wrong. When we get to the age of accountability, you know, when we reach the age of accountability, and, and this varies. Some children mature more quickly than others but once we realize right from wrong we know what God wants us to do to accept Christ and be baptized for the remission of our sins then the responsibility is on us those that know to do good and, and doeth it not to him it is sin we've got to realize Come to ourselves, realize our situation. Christ said, Matthew 10 and 32, he says, Whosoever shall confess me before men, I will confess him before my Father in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father in heaven. 
so we have to confess we do believe Jesus is the Son of God. And this was a big step, especially back in the early New Testament church, when you could be arrested and put to death for making that confession. You know, we're very fortunate today to have the privilege to meet here and worship in spirit and in truth without fear of harm or persecution. Early New Testament Christians didn't have that great privilege. They could make that confession and, and be arrested, thrown in jail, could be beaten, could have been put to death for announcing their faith in Jesus Christ. So uh, we, we see the need to be prepared. And we see all throughout the New Testament how we are to do that and how we are to prepare. The wages of sin is death. We earn death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So we see in Revelations let's look back in in, uh, in chapter 22 there we see in uh, verse 17 John writes the spirit and the bride say come let him who hears say come let him who a thirst come whosoever desires let him take of the water of life freely. Whosoever that uh, bars none. Whosoever. Whosoever. That's all. I can't quite reach the top of the board like Luke can, but maybe you can see that. Whosoever will excludes nobody. That's all who here come. The Spirit says come. Many, you know, remember uh, perhaps family members, older parents, grandparents that live faithful Christian lives. We look to their example uh, and, and want to follow that example to uh, be prepared for the Lord. God said it back in Genesis 6 and 3, my spirit shall not always strive with man. We've got to uh, do his will and be pleasing to him. The bride says come, of course, is the church. An invitation we give each service. We say come, come, all, whosoever will. We don't join the church like a club, acts uh, 2 and 47, praising God and having favor with the people. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Whosoever heareth, he says, come. All who hear the truth and accept it. Him that is a thirst come. I said back in John 4 and 13, whosoever, again, whosoever will drink of the water of life, thir uh, Shall, who drinketh of this water, talking about the woman at the well, will thirst again. But my water, spiritual water, who drinketh of that water I shall give him will never thirst. So whosoever will. We know, of course, uh, that each and every one of us have a decision to make. Christ tells us of the results of judgment back in Matthew. 25th chapter there, we find Jesus, and again we look in, into the future of judgment. We face Christ in judgment. We know there's going to be a great separation on that day. In verse 34, Matthew 25, 34, he says, The king shall say to those on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So those who are on the right hand, we know for 
are going to inherit that gift of eternal life. So uh, we all hopefully want to uh, be a part of that group that enters into the joys of, our ble of the blessed. But in verse 41, he says, Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick in prison, and you did not visit me. Oh, the anguish of all those on the left hand. They will say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and didn't minister to you? Then he will answer, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away unto everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. You know, if it was announced today Jesus Christ was going to be over at the hospital at 2 o'clock this afternoon, would we be interested in going over and seeing him? Hopefully, you know, that would be a great event to go see Jesus Christ be with him maybe ask him questions you know Jesus Christ is with us today he's with us he's in the nursing home over at Broadhead he's in the hospital he's in the nursing home at Bria he's in the UK hospital are we interested in him he said, inasmuch as you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. That's what we're going to be judged on. Our, our works. What do we do? Are we prepared for it? So today we have an opportunity. If you've not taken those steps, if you've taken them and, and not feel secure in what you've done, you're unsure, of your preparation, you can cure that today. We can follow those steps, take that confession, be immersed in the water of baptism, and arise a new creature. <laughs> or if you've taken those steps and you know you've not followed His will exactly, said, done, been concerned with more things important than Christ's word and worship here on Sunday morning. We have another opportunity to make that right, make that confession, have the prayers of the church, and be entered back into the fold and be assured of your eternal life. There'll be one of either case. Won't you come, make it right today as we stand and sing this invitation to him.